All right, if you saw my two-part series on the topic, you guys know I am a particular fanboy of the Gerber Mark II and have been for, well, 40 years. I also mentioned in that video that went through several iterations. I like the original couple of generations better than when it went to stainless steel, but then even those were discontinued for a while, and then recently Gerber reintroduced a new version that was just, well, kind of sad, and then that one recently disappeared. Well, in that gap, they introduced a new knife that they made claim to being a potential replacement, an updated Mark II for the modern battlefield, the things we'd learned over the decades in terms of close quarter combatives. So needless to say, that had my attention. And that knife was the LHR. And I say was because I got this about 10 years ago, loved it, and then realized somewhere between then and, and now, it got discontinued too. So kind of a, a late review, but let's take a look at it. Quick, quick side by side, okay? So, yeah, some slight similarities in terms of overall length, but in terms of, of sheer beefiness, yeah, compared to the original first generation design of the, of the Mark II, oh boy, big differences. Let's talk about specs, but first I want to talk about just general background. Now, you guys can look up the biographies yourselves if you want to, but LHR stands for... Well, the, the names of the three designers. Matt Larson, USMC, U.S. Army Rangers, renowned combatives instructor. So there's your knowledge and experiential base. You've also then got two very famous knife makers, knife designers. So you've got Bill Harsey Jr. and Chris Reeve. And this is similar in certain ways to the infamous... Yarborough knife, which is given to graduates of the Special Forces Qualification Course. So yeah, that's it's got some cred there. It's not quite the same though. It certainly is a lot more of a production knife, and it retailed. MSRP was about 150 bucks, but you can find it. I think I found mine for a little bit over a hundred when I got it. Now there are two generations of this. The Gen One was made out of 420 stainless steel, which a lot of people got nervous about. But, you know, if you heat treat it, you know, forge it, heat treat it, harden it reasonably well, it's, it's not bad. But because of that backlash, they made the second generation out of 440. You think they would have picked even better steel if that was the concern. But so far, this knife has been just fine for me, and so have my other knives made out of the same stuff. Haven't haven't really broken one other than a couple of... As I've talked about in my Mark II review, chip tips. Yeah, that was a thing for those really fragile Mark II tips. But the way you tell the difference is look at the serrations. This is a Generation two. You got about an inch of pretty big teeth. So if yours has a longer stretch of smaller teeth, that's, that's a Gen 1. The major difference. The, um, the hilt grip, it is a full tang. So you can kind of see it's a beefy thing. And that's a quarter inch thick. So 11 and change ounce knife. It's a, it's a heavy, solid knife. The scales are screwed on. They are, well, hard plastic coated with what they call tack height. So it's basically rubber coated plastic that has some nice, well, grooves, texturing, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's pretty positive. Pretty solid, haven't had any issues with it. It's very comfortable. And one of the things you're gonna notice is there's like choils and finger grooves, in especially for me in just the right places. So you got a nice finger groove up here and then you've got a choil here if you wanna choke up. And I, I do a lot for fine work. And if I wanna get my finger up on the back of the blade, there's even a little depression rounded here compared to the you know more squared off section of the spine. Yeah, so you can get your hand up here very nicely. Yet it still has enough of a, well, it's part of the full tang, guard to protect your hands, keep them from sliding up the knife. So ergonomics, very good. You also notice it has a slight kind of forward curve to it, at least in terms of blade versus handle orientation. At the bottom end, you have, well, hell of an impact tool. Whether you're talking about glass breaking or people breaking, 
yeah, and uh, and a lanyard hole. The blade has a matte black coating, which this one's held up pretty well for me. It is single-edged with a secondary bevel, and as you saw in that little quick cutting test, it's, it's a little bit ragged. It's not the best. Reminds me in certain ways of, of the beefier K-Bar Beckers, if you have any experience with those. Yeah, it's kind of like that. So it's not necessarily a super razor sharp knife. I suppose I could make it one if I wanted to, but I haven't really done more than basic rehoning, stropping to keep this thing, well, in usable condition. I don't, I don't want to muck with it, especially now that it's kind of a collector's item. So let's take a look at the sheath. Okay, so you don't really get a sheath so much with this knife as you get an entire like gear kit. This is stripped down almost the minimal part of it as it comes out of the box, and I'm sorry I can't show you the whole thing because I have the bits scattered to the four winds. It comes with multiple leg straps and vest straps and even a whole drop rig. So yeah, and it all clicks in modularly and it's nice. So basically what I left it with, you can see the loop on the top there for the, um, the drop rig. And then it's got some, you know, all sorts of different attachments for different kinds of belts or whatever else you want to mount it to. However, one of the limitations of this comes from the locking system, which I'll show you in a minute, that makes this a right hand, right side wear scabbard and, and you don't get any alternatives to that so that, that kind of sucks and why is that well you'll notice this is a pretty chunky beast it's definitely not very well concealable it's designed to be worn with you know military gear probably on your thigh but yeah there is this right there it's a locking mechanism let me show you how it works knife only goes in the sheath in one direction and actually the sheet, even though it's it's kydex, it's really thick kydex, and it also has that rubbery stuff on the outside. I don't know why that was necessary. If you really wanted to get a grip on this and help you unsheath it, maybe, I don't know, rubbery sheath, interesting choice. Okay, first of all, check this out. Yeah, big snap, right? Okay, so compared to other knives that have different kind of tension, retention in, in the kydex sheaths, this has a sort of spring um, well, almost a trigger. So what you have to do is with your right hand, and this is adjustable, there's screws in here, you can adjust the tension, which I did because I'm kind of a wimp. Get your right thumb in there, and yes, I'm not wearing my brace, so yes, this can be done even with my injured thumb without the brace on. Insert it in there, and you press inward while you pull out, okay? The idea of this is to keep the knife from being grabbed by your opponent in a close quarters struggle. So the sheath has a lot to do with its, you know. But again, it's probably why the, the, the scabbard's grippy because you actually really have to shove to put it back in. You can't just drop it in. That might be an issue. And again, I've had this for about 10 years. It's broken in a bit. This used to be a major struggle, even loosening the screws to get in and out. Now it's pretty smooth. Once you get it down, let me try to do it left-handed. Left-handed, I, I would have to kind of work my, my thumb in here and just push in a weird direction. I could do it now. And, you know, when the knife was newer, I really couldn't. So that's a thing that might, you know, make you decide to get a different sheath carry system for the knife or maybe not maybe you'll love it if you can find one or maybe gerber will make something to replace it eventually who knows yeah my relationship with gerber has had its pretty severe ups and downs anyway let's talk a little bit about the rest of the specs and well what you can do with it all right, so in that initial comparison video, you saw it's, it's generally the same length as the Mark II and, and knives in that similar range. Already mentioned, quarter inch thick, tang through the beginning of the blade, and then you get some distal taper. Okay, so it's, it's a pretty beefy beast. The blade comes in just short of seven inches with an overall length of 12 and a half. So basically this pointy thing longer than a Mark II. So I'm familiar with the size. And as I said, it's quite comfortable. Now, 
based on designer descriptions, primary use of this knife, I'll, I'll demonstrate standing up, is going to be about thrusting, especially thrusting through resisting materials at close range. However, it does have enough beef to not only cut, but, but chop. Talk about that in a second. And then speaking of that, you add some serrations in there for utility use. It does not have a sharpened back edge, but it does kind of come down to a diamond. I suppose you put a little sharpness on that if you really wanted to. But it's profiled for, well, penetration. But there is enough flat on the back that you could theoretically use it for some, some field craft, some bushcraft. It's hefty enough to serve that role. I don't know how sturdy it is compared to a knife that is more dedicated for that too. I don't think I'd take this out and do any batoning with it, for instance, especially since I can't get a new one. But let's take a look at, well, how it moves and how it works as a martial knife. All right, so in that Mark II video, you saw me twirling the thing around. It's certainly not as easy with a knife that's heavier and, well, thicker got more girth and I can easily get through my tiny fingers but I can do it and I think part of that is also because of that rubbery texture it's not very slippy so I can turn the knife from reverse grip to forward grip without too much trouble now as the designer demonstrated primary function for him based on his experience was well, again, penetrative action, stabbing, and thrusting. Designed to get through clothing, maybe even soft armor. So, you guys remember stab him? Yeah, this is a very comfortable knife, very strong knife, very effective knife for tip thrusting. It gets a lot of penetration. And even in longer thrusts, things that are more in line with the arm, I can use a hammer grip. I can use a handshake grip, I can use a saber grip with my thumb on the back. Not really too much reason to use more of the fencer's grip with my, hand, my thumb on the side of the knife like this. Yeah, those actually work really well. And if I flip it around into the ice pick to use it in that grip, yeah, that's also, that's, that's really, really nice application. However, yeah, it's got a good enough edge and balance and beef one of the things that um, Matt Larson was thinking that if you have to defend yourself at close quarters from somebody who's got a weapon or somebody trying to grab your weapon in terms of your rifle, you might be able to reach for this if it's down here on your hip where the straps are designed to keep it and then use chop cuts against hands and arms. Okay, and they should be able to penetrate thin clothing. Or you could go for the face or the head that way or the leg. But it can also do a decent, well, more of a draw cut. So yeah, it's definitely got good application, good mass, good edge, good balance to be able to do some good damage. So yeah, pretty effective martial knife, depending on, well, how you use it. And you could use it in a lot of different ways based on your styles, techniques, things like that. In the reverse grip, it's, you know, one of the things he pointed out was being able to use your other hand to push in either either orientation to push into the thrust. But with that spike there, I, yeah, that, that could be rather uncomfortable and even injurious. But in the reverse grip, yes, you can slash with it and absolutely stab with it. So it's got good application. So, I am really sad that they discontinued it. And I hope that they eventually replace it with something, well, as good or maybe better. But again, things have been rather up and down between me and Gerber. Yeah, we'll see. There's certainly a lot of other great choices out there leaning towards anything from a fighting knife to a, well, more of a, a field or bushcraft knife. Now, not only did I do my series on Gerber Mark II, but I also recently did a review of the Cold Steel OSS and how I wasn't too fond of how that was out of the box, but then I modified it 
sharpened it, reprofiled it, made a few other changes to it, including one thing I, I didn't show you on camera because I did it after I made the video. I actually reshaped the grip a little bit to take out some of those things that were bothering me about just the grip shape. Love the knife a lot more. Makes me think, well, you know, I've got some well, minor skill at knife remaking and certainly a lot of experience. <sighs> Should I attempt to design something of my own. Okay, that's a scary thought. But until I figure out where that's going to go, I hope this was interesting, informative. Maybe you've seen one of these, maybe you have one, maybe you'll get the chance to come across one on, you know, the aftermarket market. Who knows? It is, it's certainly a, a very interesting, useful, attractive knife. But as always, until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you back for more.